am waiting right now in a uh, parking lot of a gas station off of Highway 16 near Entwistle, Alberta, which is not too far from where Melissa's farm is, uh, or her, her mom's farm, not Melissa's farm. Um, and the reason I'm sitting here is that on the way out, on the drive out to come visit uh, the mother-in-law with the kids, I decided I might try and find myself a winter vehicle. So I contacted a guy, stopped at a bank, um, <laughs> got a bank draft. This is this is kind of um, a bold move. I got the bank draft in the amount I want to offer him because there's no bank in this area that I deal with. So I've come prepared to pay the guy. I got his name off of his uh, Facebook page um, from selling the vehicle. So we're gonna meet here, he's gonna show me the vehicle, but I, if it's good, which it sounds like it is, I'm just gonna present him with a an offer of a uh, bank draft with his name on it. I don't think I've ever done anything quite this brash before, basically show up and say, here's my offer and here's the money. Uh, if he doesn't accept it, I'll just send him a, we do e-transfer here where you can just electronically transfer somebody the money, but um, he should be pulling up any minute here. And this is going to be sort of, um, it's a winter vehicle that I've been looking for, trying to track down a winter vehicle. But Melissa's off having a nice visit, and I'm sitting in a parking lot waiting for a guy to show up. I'm even so prepared that if he didn't have a bill of sale, I've got a bill of sale, I've got a license plate, and I've got his money. So we'll see if we can make this happen today. No sign of him yet. Probably be any minute here. Just keeping my eyes open see him come rolling up. Okay, I was looking online the last few days trying to find something. I always get a little bit bummed out when I have to be practical like a normal person and try and find a normal vehicle. Um, newer cars depreciate like crazy, but I kind of need something a little bit newer for winter. So I tried to find something that would be good in winter um, that won't depreciate super fast and is kind of cool and different. It had to meet at least a few criteria. I think I found a vehicle that should tick all those boxes. And the nice part about it is he's the original owner. Um, it hasn't been through a whole bunch of hands or been through a bunch of sketchy dealerships or anything like that. So it should be a pretty decent vehicle. But he thinks, um, chatting with him on the phone, that I'm probably a little bit crazy. Because um, <laughs> uh, I said, yeah, I'm prepared to buy it like basically today. And I, I, you know, that's not usually, you know, you come out and look and then you phone back later on. So um, he's meeting me at this generic location in the parking lot, either A, to uh, take my kidneys from me when I'm not looking or uh, B, you know, sell me a vehicle. And I think I actually see him pulling up now. I can see him coming across the bridge. So I'm gonna go check out potentially, hopefully, what might be my new car. We've not even met, we've not done any kind of deal yet, but uh, we'll see if we can make this happen. FJ Cruiser. So why an FJ Cruiser? Well, I started looking around at older SUVs, um, old Land Rovers and Range Rovers, and they all seem to have, you know, some inherent issues with them and need a lot of maintenance. The Toyotas, especially the FJ Cruiser line, not only have they proven to be quite reliable, but they've maintained their value very well. And in fact, now that they've discontinued them as of uh, a couple years ago, they're starting to increase in value. So it is kind of a future collectible too. If you want um, something that's rugged like a Jeep, but uh, more refined and gives you a smooth ride, a vehicle like this is probably a good way to go. Plus, you can do this with it.
That's the one thing about a vehicle like this. There's no road that's gonna stop you. In fact, you don't even need a road. And around town, it's nice and smooth, quiet, and really comfortable ride. There's all kinds of little compartments around here too. Look at that, there's the tool kit and what looks like an extra wiper blade. Another secret compartment with nothing inside of it, but except for extra space. Comes equipped with tie downs, in case you need to strap down your cargo. Seats conveniently pop down. There's just a little button here you push in and you instantly have extra cargo space. And because they've given this narrow windshield, they had to come up with a creative way to wipe the windows. So you've got one, two, three windshield wipers on the front. Now, kind of like an old MGV, they had the same sort of setup because it also had a narrow windshield. They are kind of a neat looking vehicle. Melissa thinks it looks like it was made out of Lego. The kids don't disagree. I love that it has five seats inside. We can get the whole family in here. Two up front, three across the back, a good little cargo area. Um, we've got, you know, your regular sort of radio CD changer. The compass right on top of the dash there, which is really cool. I don't know, all around is a neat layout. Plus it has your uh, four wheel drive. So it runs in two wheel drive unless you switch it into four wheel and it's got uh, high two and high four. Uh, and then your four wheel low, which is off to the side there. And that's kind of your crawler mode. This one has rear differential locks, uh, which is a nice feature to have in case you really get stuck or need to get out of a sticky situation. But all in all, I'm really liking it. So far, everything seems really good on the vehicle. And there's been only one problem I've had to fix, and that is to calibrate the compass. Now, the only way to do that according to the manual, is to drive in a circle while holding in a calibration button. So I'm gonna give that a try. Non più trai farfaloni amoroso Notte giorno di torno girano Delle belle torbando al riposo Ma ci set vado gino d'amor Delle belle torbando al riposo Ma ci set vado gino d'amor Questi bei panachini, quel cappello leggero galante, quella chioma, quell'orio brillante, quel vermiglio donesco color, quel vermiglio donesco color. And it's fixed. They say every time you disconnect the battery, you're probably going to have to recalibrate that thing. And there's a lot of people I saw on Forbes online having the same issue. Uh, if your batteries become discharged, you just hold in your little um, set button there, drive around a couple circles and it goes away. Easy peasy. So now, as far as I know, there's not a thing wrong with this vehicle. And the best part was, bought from the original owner. I was digging in the glove box. Look, still has the original build sheet, the, uh, the window sticker from the dealership. <laughs> so it's kind of nice because you can see exactly what all the um, extras were that he paid for. So they had the off-road package, spare tire cover, roof rack, it's got the skid plates. Yeah, it's a pretty well-equipped vehicle. So would I recommend a vehicle like this? I guess the short answer is yes. I did a lot of research into trying to find the right vehicle that could make it through our Canadian winters, have a bit of cargo space, and also be able to go off-road if I come across some cool places off in the middle of nowhere that I want to go check out. So a vehicle like this is going to be fine. Um, overall, price that I paid for this vehicle was $10,000 US. It's a pretty nice vehicle. It's in near mint condition considering its age. It's even better yet about this particular vehicle is that the original owner never took it off-road, which means it was in immaculate condition when I got it. He only used it to commute. So most of the miles that are on it are highway. Um, other than that, it's pretty darn good. You know, it's a tricky thing trying to find an off-road vehicle that somebody hasn't gone off-roading in. But I think I might've found the only one in town and I'm liking it. So that's it. I've got my new winter ride and uh, it's in really great shape. We're going to try and keep it that way. Be able to take it on some adventures hopefully very soon. Um, yeah, I guess I don't have to stress too much about what I'm driving in winter time now. I didn't want to drive my old Buick. So now I've got some wheels that'll make it just fine. Thanks so much for uh, watching today's episode, guys. I hope you liked it and uh, we'll see you all soon. Bye for now.
just chilling in the river, literally. In the middle of the river. <laughs> the kids are across from us swimming, having a good time. And it's just a beautiful day.